Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in another episode. Now, I want to talk to you about setting standards because this is one of the things that I see a lot of is the lack of standards. Because if you don't take the time to set your standards before going into a relationship or going onto a job or going into anything, then you'll be presented with some things that are beneath you and you'll end up accepting it because you never established in your own mind that this is not okay. So you have to sit down and really take the time and think about how you want to be treated. So often I get these questions about, you know, why do men do this? Why do women do that? How do you get somebody to do this? How do you get somebody to do that? The answer is you got to know what you want. You got to set your standards and you can't let the world tell you what you cannot have. And that's one of the things you'll see. There are people who say, hey, I want someone who is attractive. I want someone who is responsible. I want someone who is ambitious. I want someone who is faithful, who is caring, who is kind, who is compassionate, who is understanding, who is loving and devoted. I want that package. And guess what? They eventually get it. They eventually get it because anytime they meet someone who is not that, they say, hey, this is not for me because I am becoming all of these things. I am all of these things. So I want the person that I settle down with to be all of those things. And there will always be someone else who wants what you want and not just someone else. There'll be a lot of people who want what you want. And I'm a living witness that it's very real that what you believe and what you say you want, you can get it. I have seen it in my own life and I've seen it in countless other people's lives is you just have to have the audacity to believe that you can become and that you can receive, you can attract. And when you do that, it's going to shock you and it's going to shock everybody else. Or it may not shock you, but it's going to shock everybody else because it's so easy to fall into a place of complacency. It's so easy to go into a space where we don't really believe that we deserve it. And we allow pessimists and we allow other people who don't know what they're talking about to tell us what we can't have just because they don't have it or just because they don't have the faith to go and get it. And so we end up settling and saying, no, this is, you know, this not for me. That's not realistic. That's what, that's not realistic. That's not gonna happen. This is 2021, 2022, whatever 20 it is. And that's not believable. I need to just settle for this. I need to be okay with this. And guess what? That's exactly what you get. That's exactly what you get. So when you start to identify standards, I don't want to be yelled at. I don't want to be cursed at. I don't want to be taken from, to be used, to be manipulated, to be deceived, to be lied to, to be cheated on, to be beat on. I don't want any of that. I don't want somebody who's going to be gossiping and taking my business to their family members, to their friends, and making me look bad to their friends and their family. I don't want that. I don't want somebody who just wants to be lazy and doesn't want to help, doesn't want to bring their half to the table, meaning bring their best to the table and serve in the area that they are most capable of serving. I don't want a mooch or a freeloader, somebody that's not going to help out and reciprocate and be committed. See, those are standards. Those are standards that you have to identify. And when you identify those standards, it makes it so much easier to weed through people. And that's why, that's how you get dating to not be so daunting because you can meet somebody and you can go on a date and on the first date, you can pick up the things that are not on your list of standards. And so, and then at that point you're able to say, Hey, you know, 
I don't want to waste your time. Um, I just, I don't think we're really compatible um, in several areas and I don't think it's going to work and I'm dating intentionally and I know or assume that you're dating intentionally and so I just don't think it would be smart for us to continue, you know, because it could just be wasting each other's time. And you're able to say that after the first date. And then what that does is it unlocks your mind. It lets you know that that situation is done. And then now you're in a position to where you can move forward and you can meet somebody new the next day. But see, when you don't have standards and you don't know your standards, you just going along to get along and you bumping into people, you meeting people. And then next thing you, you know, you're talking on the phone, you FaceTime and then you're going on dates. And because you have not set your standards in a concrete way, all of these red flags are popping up and you're not seeing them. You're not seeing them or you're ignoring them because you have not set it in your mind what you will and won't tolerate, what you do and don't want. And so it's important to sit down and write it down and read it over to yourself 10, 15, 20 times to really get it in your heart. So now it's in your heart, it's, it's in your subconscious mind, it's in your conscious mind. So now it's always there. So when you're having this conversation on the first date or the first phone call or even in the DM, in the inbox on social media or if you're doing dating sites and you're talking to this person in the inbox, because you are at peace and you are one with your standards, when they are outside of that, you pick right up on it and then you're able to move forward. And so this is the work that you have to be intentional about. You have to be intentional about this. And if you're not, then what's gonna happen, you'll end up with somebody and they'll have this issue, they'll have this red flag. And it may be a situation where this person smokes. Let's say they smoke, that's a common thing today amongst men. And then now a lot more women starting to smoke. But let's say this person smokes and you don't smoke or you're allergic to smoke or, or let's just say you don't smoke and you have not really connected smoking to what happens if you smoke a lot and how does it affect your life expectancy? How does it affect your skin, your nails, your teeth, your lungs, your esophagus, your clothes, your your walls, your furniture? You haven't your car, the cloth or the leather, the baby, when you hold a baby and you're a smoker, you haven't really thought through this very common thing that people do and you don't do it. And you are telling yourself, oh, I don't want to judge anybody. So you don't make that a standard that whoever I'm with cannot be a smoker. You don't make it a standard and then you end up with someone who is a smoker. And you ignore that. And everything else about this person is perfect. So it seems. And you didn't set that standard. But the next thing you know, you... You get into the relationship and you falling for the person and then it's like the person smokes but not just like nicotine or whatever they also smoke you know marijuana and they can't go outside and smoke it because it's not legal where you are or the neighbors complained about it so they got to smoke in the house and now they're smoking in the house and now you're getting secondhand smoke. And now you go get tested and it shows up or you go to work and you smelling like loud. And they're, mm. Mm. Oh, what, uh, how was your morning? Smelling uh, kind of fragrant. And now you like, oh my goodness. You know, you in love, but you walk around smelling like a Christmas tree from a different kind of yard. And then you get pregnant. 
So now you're getting ready to bring a child into the world. But your partner is a smoker. So now your baby is getting secondhand smoke. And then if the baby's not being smoked around, the, the, the smoke is still in the pores. So now you're doing your research and you see that the smoke stays in the pores for 72 hours or how many of hours. And then you see that when the person holds the baby, even with their shirt off, that THC goes into the pores of the baby. And now you're like, oh my goodness. And then the child go to daycare and the daycare like, uh, yeah, um, little Jane, you know, had a very strong smell on her shirt. Um, and we just want to bring it to your attention because it smelled like, and you're like, oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to address that. I'm so sorry about that. You know, she doesn't smoke, but it's just others, you know, certain areas. Mm -hmm. And then next day, you know, DCL knocking on the door because La Jane came into kindergarten with a little dime sack. You see what I mean? Now this is it. This now this is a true story. Now this is a real story. This didn't happen somewhere in somebody's life for real. This ain't that far fetched. But I want to paint the picture of how you, when you don't set your standards, how anything can happen. And then before you know it, you don't you don't realize. And so now you come to the place and you want to go out of town and you want a vacation, you know, for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, because you got the financial freedom. But your partner like, hey, I can't get this on the plane. And, you know, I got to wake and bake every morning. You know, I got to smoke every morning. I can't get this on the plane. And then if I get over there, I don't want to be going out in the street asking. I might bump into an undercover. Now I'm locked up over here in this country. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go for no two, three weeks. And you will see this happen. You will see people who have an addiction, have, can't live a normal life, can't go certain place, can't do certain things. It was certain people in, in that, you know, um, NBA bubble who probably opted out because they like, listen, how am I going to get my stuff in there? Or they got in there and, and like, hey, how am I going to get my little hit? How am I going to get my stuff? I got to sneak out of here. You see? And so you got to have standards because when you don't have standards, things will creep in. Things will creep in. And so when you don't set a stand, hey, I don't want to be yelled at. You think that Yelling is a part of an argument and arguing is a form of communication. That's what you believe because that's what you saw from your parents. That's what you saw from your past relationship. So now you come into the relationship, things get heated. Y'all have a disagreement. It turns into an argument. You get yelled at. You get yelled at this week. You upset about that. You say, don't yell at me, but you didn't set that precedent early enough. Now you get yelled at the next argument. But the next argument, the yell is a little louder. And it's a curse word dropped in there. Now the next time, the yell is a little louder. It's a curse word dropped in there. And you get growled. The next time, you get yelled at, cursed at. But it's in the parking lot of the mall. So now other people see it. It's in the parking lot at the church. Now the church members see it. And the reason being that you now find yourself here two years in, a year in, three years in, is because you did not set standards. So you have to set standards and it's going to have a, you know, trickle down effect. So, it, or it may be, okay, boom, this is the standard. But then that, and that's number one, but you may have one A, one B, one C. So when you say, I don't want to be lied to. One of the subcategories is, you know, I'm not going to accept someone coming in late. Supposed to be home 5.30 and get home 9.30 p.m. Supposed to be there 5.30 p.m. Because got off work at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. So now you look and you're like, okay, what's going on now? But that's, and so that's some boom you address right away. 
And see, when you address this stuff right away and you getting right on it, now you get to a place to where now you see. Now you see if this person is the person because what's going to happen is when you set standards and you set these boundaries, every person that you meet, they're going to test you. Men and women test. And it's, and the tests are in different ways. And some tests may be, you know, seem harmless. And then some tests may be very intentional and they may have malintent with the test. But you're going to see this. And then when you call it out, when you uh, announce this behavior that you've seen and, and you address this, I mean, when you address this behavior, then you get to see how the person responds. Now you get to see if he or she apologize and say, hey, I'm going to change. And if the person is unwilling to change and they give you pushback and oh, whatever, now, boom, you get to go. Relationship over. Now you're gone. And so you save yourself years by having standards. You save yourself years. You save yourself having a child with this person, having a child out of wedlock with this person, catching STDs, getting cheated on, having other people calling your phone saying they with your person. And so you save yourself from all of that. And this is what you have to understand is these are the benefits of setting standards is you get to dictate and determine how your life will turn out in this area because you have decided what you will and won't accept. And so you got to have these standards because this is what's going to determine your deal breakers. And when you know this, as soon as you see it, you can address it. So understand this. By having these standards, you can meet somebody who decides that they're going to test you. You can meet somebody who says, okay, I see these standards, but I think they fake. I think they fake. And I remember, I remember a guy said to me one time, we was in a group meeting with all men, and the guy was like, man, you know, man, it's because of you, nah, that I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to hit this chick. And she like, oh, I'm waiting until marriage. And it's like, I know my homeboy just hit her last week, but she don't know I know. But she acting like that because I got money. So because I got money, now she want to try to act classy. And see, that's what I don't like right there, man. And so that's the thing. You could get with somebody that recognize your quote unquote standards and they don't believe it. So then what the test will be is, okay, she say she ain't sleeping with nobody. She say she saving herself. Okay. Take over here to the Maldives. We're going to be there seven nights, eight days. I'm going to buy eight new outfits. We flying first class. Mm hmm. Get a little red wine every day, white wine, a little mimosas. Mm hmm. Get a little bag in duty free. Mm hmm. Then we're going to see if she really bought that life and get that view in her life. Because mm -hmm. I sense a little hot pants on her that she used to have, but now she's trying to pretend like she got standards. You see, so now the test comes. So now you really got to be about your standards. And this is the thing. Nine out of 10 people ain't about their standards. And that's what need to be changed. Nine out of 10 people ain't about their standards. They ain't about their standards. Include myself. Include myself. I'm still working on it today. I'm married, so my standards really outside of the, in, in life. You know, also in marriage and with, with my kids with my family, with my business associates, business partners. You got to have standards in every area of life. And so this is what I see happening. I see so many people come and say, hey, I'm, I'm celibate. I say, no, you're not. So for one, you ain't never looked up the word. 
Two, you saying celibate. The word is celibate. And then three, you don't fit the definition of celibate. You are abstinent. So first, for you to for you to be something, you got to know what you're talking about first. You got to know what you is. You are abstaining from sex. Okay, all right then. Well, I'm waiting till marriage. Oh yeah, you don't know that. You hope that you wait because you ain't seen every test. You don't know what it feels. It, it could be a certain day that all of your love languages is spoken and your mind and your body is stimulated in a way that it's never been stimulated and you done experienced some things and seen some things and got some gifts and got some amazing conversation the beautiful is sunsets, the greatest dinner, the sweetest wine, the best bike rub. And if you didn't rode that bicycle before, then that means you ain't forgot how to ride it. And so when I, when everything align, we gonna see. When you fall in love, we gonna see. So see. If you really don't come to terms with your standards, you'll come into a situation where you get tested and you have not seen a test like that. And when you ain't seen that test, you could end up failing that test and most people fail. So this is the importance of standards. And see, with your standards, here's the thing. You gotta state the standard. But then you got to have a why. You have to understand your why. You got to understand your reasoning in order for it to stick. Because see, a lot of people saying they're abstaining from sex, but their reasoning is because it's a trend. Their reasoning is because it looks cool. Their reason is because they think it's going to make them sound special, make them sound sophisticated, make them look classy, make them look different from everybody else. See, the why is not deep enough. The why isn't because I love God, I'm living for God, and I want to please God. And his word says that fornication is a sin, and I want to make sure that I'm not living in sin, and this means more to me than anything else. See, if your why is not deep enough, then that other person going to have a way to get past your why. And then you're going to be asking how. Now your why going, why did I do that? How did I do that? What was I doing? Now you finna have some other W's in there. You see what I mean? So you have to state your standard and then you got to connect it to your why. Why do you believe that? Why is this a standard? What does this mean to you? Why does it mean that to you? Now, now you start to understand, okay? So then, here we go. The next thing that you're going to see is you got to look at the pros and the cons of these standards. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make sure that this is a standard and not just a preference. That's what you got to understand. And we may talk about that in another video, but you got to make sure it's a standard and not just a preference. Then when you have your standards, you have to put the shoe on the other foot, meaning you got to come outside of yourself and you got to look at how you're going to be tested. You got to look at how you're going to be tested because as soon as you commit to excellence, you're going to be tested with mediocrity. As soon as you commit to your new way of eating, your favorite old restaurant running the special of a lifetime, BOGO, two for one, half off, and all of a sudden, all their commercials coming up on your Facebook, on your Instagram. Now they got billboards. And you like, now y'all ain't had no billboard. This whole time I was eating over there, now I done changed my life and I'm eating clean. Now you got billboards. See, as soon as you commit to something, as soon as you say, 
I'm abstaining because getting on my back or zipping my pants down has not worked for me. It has not resulted in a marriage. So I'm abstaining. Then the next thing you know, the next week you finna meet a distraction that looked like destiny. And he or she is gonna look like a tall glass of water and you in the Sahara Desert. And that's finna be your test. And you now is gonna be wondering, well, is this my soul mate? Is this my purpose mate? Is this my life partner? It's, oh my goodness, as soon as I made the commitment, then I met this person. This got to be a sign. And then, wine you, dine you, slow wine you, grind you, find you. Now, two weeks in, three weeks in, month in, conversation amazing, treatment amazing, dates amazing. And now you start to question. Yeah, one time won't, won't, won't hurt. I, I mean, I do need to test it out for myself just to make sure we compatible all the way. And, you know, I've been seeing Lisa Butt over there been giving them the eye. So it's like, and you know she put out, oh my goodness, that thing's so loose. So it's like she keep looking at him. So it's like, if I don't give him none, then he gonna go over there to her butt. And, and she gonna give him something, then that might be what he want. So it's like, you know, let me just let him see what this is like. And once I put this whipple snapper on him, then he gonna be all right. So now you didn't give yourself all the excuses in the world to break your commitment because you done got a test in front of you that you ain't never seen before. It's a new kind of test. And so this is where it comes in at, and that's why you got to connect with your standards. And, and that's why you got to step outside of yourself and you got to look and you got to see, okay, how am I going to be tested? And so for so long in my life, I, you know, for several years in my life, I was not there. Like I, I would have a standard and, but I wouldn't really envision the test. So now I'm looking and I'm like, okay, this my standard. How am I about to get tested? And I sit still and I think. And I process and I and I look at, OK, what is going to be the most tempting situation to make me compromise my standards? What is it going to be? I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Right. Like and give you a real life example. I say I'm not doing TV. I am not doing a TV show. I ain't doing no more auditions to be the host of this new dating re relationship show. I will say that on the video and within one week, a production company will write me with a raggedy relationship show that they already got greenlit on Bravo or this or that. And then my butt is, is on an audition on Zoom, knowing I don't do good on Zoom auditions. I'm right there. And I just said I ain't doing TV because it's fake. It's too scripted. They're going to get you in all kind of foolishness and nonsense. And then I get tested and it'd be something that sound a little different, that look a little different. It's already green lit. They need to pick somebody in a week. They, they sure it's me. It'd be all this different stuff. And then here I, here I go. I'm like, Oh Lord. All right. And so, and I remember early in my marriage when I committed, I said, look, I'm married. I'm going to be faithful. Next thing you know, this woman who done been on everybody poster, everybody TV screen, every this there, and it'd be different ones. One shaped like this, one built like this, one taught like this, and it'd be all these tests coming. And and they'd just be, oh, just wanna do some coaching. Just wanna and then I realized right there in the moment, I'm like, oh wow, this a test. But I hadn't seen it yet. And, and to God be the glory, I was graced to be able to get through it, to recognize it. But see, you can get to a place to where if you're not thinking about it or if you're not aware of it, you could get got. And so I realized, I said, hey, instead of getting in the moment and getting in the test and then have to find a way of escape, 
let me be two steps ahead of the adversary. So when I set this standard and I say I ain't finna do no TV because it's just, they full of it. I ain't finna, you know, buy this or go there. Or I'm not accepting this right here. I'm not doing this in business. Then I have to sit and start thinking about what are the potential tests? What'll make it look good? What'll make it look good? And I remember one time, you know, talking about being faithful. And you got to go your whole life. And I remember one of my clients said to me, well, Tony, you faithful right now, but what about in 10 years? What about in 20 years? You, you trying to say you're going to be faithful the whole rest of your life? You only sleep with one woman for the rest of your life? And so you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear stuff like that. And I remember talking to my wife about this. And, and I said, I said, nah, baby, nah, listen. There's only two people that might get me to cheat. I said that Oprah and that Beyonce. Cause uh, hey, for that money, I might be a thought. And I said that jokingly. I said that jokingly. But then my wife, she hit me with something. She hit me with something. She said, she said, don't say that. Don't even play like that. She said, don't even play like that because she said, what you got to realize is. Look at you right now. This was several years ago, more than this decade ago. And she said, look at you right now. You coaching celebrities that other men lust over, go crazy by. And they see these celebrities retweeting you, posting you. They see you, you with these celebrities in their city. And these men love these women that... You got multi-millionaires, all kind of men coming to you. Hey, man, put a word in with me for your client, such and such, for your client, such and such, for your client. She was like, hey, you ain't even got no, she was like, you ain't even big. You ain't even got no real, real name. Like, you just getting started. And she was like, so how do you know that one day Jay-Z and Beyonce not going to be going through a tough time? And you done put 20 years in and you the number one most respected relationship coach in the world. And Beyonce called you for coaching. And she said that very thing that you said that you joked about could end up being a possibility. Because 10 years ago or three years ago, did you think about being able to coach this person? Think about being able to coach this person, that person, that person. Did you think this person will be following you on social media? I said, mm, you right. Anything that we say we not going to do, any standard that we set, we are going to be tested in that area. And so we have to sit and we got to look and we got to plot these tests out. We got to look at them. And you still might get hit with something that you have never seen. But if you didn't at least play a couple of scenarios through your mind, when you see it, even when, when it look a little different, you say, oh, I'm already ready. I'm ready. So now what happened is I say I'm 100% faithful to my wife. So I'm 100% faithful to my wife. When I say that and I say that publicly, I say that on the video Within a couple weeks, a woman with a blue check, verified millions of followers or hundreds of thousands of followers, you know, she's some type of model or some type of music artist or some type of, send me a DM. Hi, Tony. Hey, how you doing? But because I done processed it, because I done thought about the test, when I see that DM, I don't even answer. I don't even answer. I don't even look at it. I say, listen, if this person's serious and they coming to me as a prof professional, then they going to know how to either reach a client that they know that's already my client that they know, and they could get put in touch with me legitimately, professionally, or they could see right there on my bio where it say email, and they could email in, and that email go right to my wife. And they could say, hey, I would like to do coaching with Tony Gaskins. Does he, is he accepting clients? And guess what? That email never come through. So then it confirms to me, this was a little entry test. 
Or maybe it wasn't, but I say this could have been a little entry test right here. And so think about this in your life. When you have committed to something, when you've said something, when you've set a standard, think about this in your life. How many times you've committed to something and then the next week you get a test, you get a big test and you fall on your face. Think about it. So this is the importance of standards. This is the importance of standards. And, you know, I always say, you know, they put advertisements on your videos. I, we, as a content creator, we don't choose the ads. The network, YouTube or Facebook or whoever, they choose the advertisements. As a creator, you don't choose the ads. But what I'll say is like, I'll say something like, hey, you know, I'm not doing no ads. I'm not doing no paid promotion. And then I get an email from this company and they like, we got 20000 and we want you to promote this here product. And I look at this product, I'm like, that's against my you know, belief system. That's against, I'm, I don't even fundamentally agree with that. But it's still tempting because it might be a lot of money. And it's like, you got bills to pay. But I have to politely decline and say, no, I can't do it. So what I'm saying to you is, you're going to meet somebody who look like everything you dreamt of. Height. Weight, body type, ambition, profession, complexion, everything. And the first one that looked like that, nine out of ten times, is not actually your destiny. It's a distraction that looked like destiny. And then everything that you just said, you said, I'm not going to let nobody yell at me. I'm not let, going to let nobody tell me they're going to call me at a certain time and then don't call me until the next day. I'm not letting that happen. I'm not going to let nobody, you know, not keep their word, stand me up on a date, set a date and then cancel it. I'm not going to let nobody do this and do that. And then here go the tall glass of water and you get tried in that very area. It's going to happen. Look at it. I'm not finna work no overtime because I need to work on my dream. I'm building my dream. And then next day, next day your boss come to you. You know, we had this huge situation and we really need you to put in an extra 10 hours this week. And I can always count on you. And you've always just been the henchman and you've just been there. And that's why I just put your name in for this nomination that's coming up. And I just really want you. I know you have to get a sitter. I know you have to pay extra for, you know, child care. And I know you have to miss practice and the game. But I just really need you for this 10 hours. And then here you go. You want to be a people pleaser. You, you just got too much pride and ego around pleasing, around being that person that's always available, that's always there, that's always, you know, forgetting about yourself and serving everybody else. <sighs> okay, I, you know, I just said I'm not doing any more overtime because I'm building, a you know, my own business on the side. and But, you know, I'll go ahead and do it for you. And then next thing you know, boom, you right there. Fell right on your face, right out to your standards. So this is what I want you to understand. So tonight, sit down, or today, or whatever, or tomorrow, sit down and rewrite your standards. Write out your standards and then write your why. Why, why is this a standard? Why you believe this? Why you want this? Really, really dive deep into that why. Then write the pros and cons. What's the good and the bad of having this standard? And weigh the pros and the cons, which list is longer? And then really evaluate that standard and say, is this really a standard? Should this be one of my standards? And if you still feel strongly about it, good, keep it. Then what are some possible tests that I may face in the future? Near future or far future? What are some possible tests? And just flesh your brain out. Just go all the way through it and try to come up with at least one. But if you could get three or four potential possible tests that you may be tested with to, that's asking you to compromise your standard, write that down so that you have seen it in your mind. So that when you see it in real life, you are already ready for it. And you like, oh, boom, I done seen this or, or right next to it. Just something very similar to this. I just seen it. Okay, yeah, I'm ready for you. Oh, there go my way of escape. Here go my letter, my, my polite decline. 
here go my no. Here go my here my little out right here. And that's when you're gonna realize that you're ready. So hey, this Tony Gaston. Yeah, we ain't doing no whole hour, but I just can't be talking just to be talking, you know. So if I if I got enough to get us the hour, then I got enough. If not, I ain't got it. God bless you. We'll talk soon.